$350 million spent on R&D in the last 10 years alone. We would not be here tonight talking about age like a band that spent that money. And I will put New Skin's product pipeline up against any pharmaceutical company. They get it. They know that you and I need to have the confidence that this company is going to be bigger tomorrow and bigger next year and better the year after that than it is today. Otherwise, we don't have the ability to recruit. Can you do it? Can you go talk to your friends and your sister and your mom and tell them to do this business if in your mind you think it's somehow a diminishing business every year? I couldn't do it. And I can tell you it's way better today than it was when I started. <coughs> way better. We didn't even have a scientist when I started. <coughs> Publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange symbols in U.S. Write that down. The good news tonight, folks, is you don't have to believe me. You don't know me. I could be lying to you. I'm not, but I could be. You don't have to trust me. You can go online, you can verify every statement of fact that I've made tonight, and you can prove it for yourself. And you'll find out it's true. And so I got a question for you. If everything I've said is true, why wouldn't you do this? You should do it. Now. Like immediately, right? Okay, I'm gonna do my questions. Here we go. Okay. Talk a little bit about the heart of the company for just one second here. We have this initiative that you might have heard about earlier today. Man, is it hot in here? It doesn't make me all these bodies in this room, right? Sweaty. Okay, thank you. This is Blake Roney, chairman of Nuskin, amongst a whole group of orphans, AIDS orphans in Africa. This is in Malawi. Malawi's been really hard hit by the AIDS virus. There's about 2 million kids that are orphans in this country. Horrible problem. Nuskin decided four and a half years ago that we were going to help stop childless starvation in this world. And so New Skin's scientists put together these vitamins that aren't just rice to fill their bellies, but give them the actual nutrients growing kids need to actually be healthy and have active minds and strong bones and all those things. And so they put that out there and they invited all of us as distributors to participate in solving the problem. As of last month, New Skin distributors, all like all of us in this room, and Rooms like this all over the world have now donated collectively over 180 million meals to feed starving kids in Africa, China, parts of North Korea where there's a huge family going on. You know, this is a great company, folks. This isn't just a company that says, just produce profit and that's all we care about. This is a company that believes if you do good, it'll come back tenfold. And there's reasons that we need to grow this company. Reasons that are bigger than just profit. Okay, we did 1.3 billion last year. We must do 10 billion someday. Because then we can make a real dent in this problem. Then we can do billions of meals. It's not a food problem, guys. There's enough food in the world. It's a distribution problem. That's what it is. And we've got a way to do it. You know what Bill Gates said just a month ago? Bill Gates is pretty smart when it comes to most things. And he's got a lot of experience in charitable giving. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has received billions of dollars of his own money, plus Warren Buffett's money, and it's now the biggest charity in the world, by far. They've got more money to distribute and fix. They've been trying to fix things all over the world. <coughs> Don't you think Bill's been thinking about charity work for the last 10 years pretty deeply? Really deeply. You know what he said a month ago? Charities by themselves can't do it. He said people can't donate enough time. They can't do it consistently enough. It's just too hard to try to put it all together. Too much overhead. You know, people get worried that their money's not really going where it should go, all those things. Well, New Skin funds the whole thing. New Skin doesn't take one dime. 100% of all the donations go right to these kids. New Skin pays all the overhead out of the company profits, okay? This, uh, this is the statement that Gates said. He said, we need to unleash the forces of capitalism to solve these big humanitarian problems. Capitalism, when people can actually get paid to solve problems, actually works. You guys need to know that this is not a not-for-profit. Nurse the Children is actually a for-profit venture. But it allows people to actually make some money so they can live to go solve the problem. That's what Gates was talking about a month ago. We're doing it. We're doing it in a big way right now. You and I donate food, we buy it, we get volume for it, and we donate it. And it gets distributed via the United Nations and other organizations globally and we make a huge impact. But we've got to keep doing it. 
You know, they get hungry tomorrow, even today. They always get hungry again. So we need you to donate every month, guys. Save one child. Everybody here can save one kid. It's like Phil, like uh, Blake Roney says here in this book. Nurse the children may only be 5% of what we do as a business, but it's 95% of who we are as a company. This is the heart of the company. You're going to find the long year with this company. This is a phenomenal company. And we're going to do a lot of good around the world, and we need to grow it to make that happen. Point number four. We're almost done. Are you guys still with me? Okay, we're on compensation. Listen up. This is how you make the money, right here. When I first saw this chart right here many years ago, I was deeply disturbed. This is what happens to 100 people in the United States of America. These numbers are from the United States Census and the U.S. Social Security Administration, who pays all the people that are over 65, right? So here's what happens. Look at this yellow area right here. 16 people are dead. Didn't even make it to 65. They died before that. This red area right here, 66 people out of 100 are living on incomes less than 30,000 a year. They're basically dead broke. This next area right here, this blue area right here, 13 people out of 100 are living on incomes of 30 to 60,000 a year. Okay, they're probably still working. I was shocked. I thought, how can it be in the United States of America that 95% of the people are either dead dead broke, or still working for a living at age 65. How can that be? That's what happens. 5% of the people right here, this green area, are living on 60000 and up, and 1% is considered wealthy. The definition of wealth in America today is $10 million of net worth, exclusive of all debt. That's what it takes to be really wealthy, 10 million. Now, I don't want to sound heartless, because I'm not heartless. But when I first saw this chart, I said to myself, I really don't care how the people that didn't make it didn't make it. I want to find out how that 1% that became wealthy became wealthy. How did they do it? And that's what I started looking at next. There's that chart right here. This is just the 1%. When I looked at this, I thought, okay, 10% are CEO or professionals. They're doctors and lawyers. That's the blue area. The green area are the CEOs. They got stock options in public companies. So the options eventually made them wealthy, more than $10 million. 5% are super salespeople. The top bond traders, the top insurance brokers, top stock brokers, those kind of people that eventually became wealthy. 1% are athletes and entertainers. When I analyzed that first part, I thought, great, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an attorney. I'm not a CEO of a public company. I'm not a super salesman. And I'm not seven feet tall, and I certainly can't sing. I'm in trouble. What am I going to do? Luckily, this big red area right here is in front of us, and that's 74% of the wealthy people in the U.S. get it how? By owning their own business. So let's stop and consider the logic for just a second. How many of you in this room tonight would admit that you can never make it financially working for somebody else? Would you admit that? Yeah. I think deep down in our heart of hearts, everybody knows that that's a true statement. You can't go to your boss tomorrow and say, you know what, I'm sick of it. Pay me ten times more, I'm out of here. What are they going to say to you? Don't let the door hit you in the, on the way out. Yeah, because you have no leverage with your boss. They can get somebody else to do what you do for about the price you do it for if you don't want to do it anymore. So you can't demand ten times more income. And so you must also agree then, if you agree with the first statement, but the only way we can make it financially is to have our own business. Is that true? That is true. Here's the only three types of businesses you can own. There's only three. Yeah, there's thousands of different kinds of companies, but they fall in three categories. One, you can buy or start a small business. What's the problem there? Large investment of time and money. Huge. Most people that own their own business know what I'm talking about, right? Anybody here tonight have your own business? You're the first one there. You're the last one to leave. You pay everybody else, and maybe you pay yourself if there's anything left. Nobody cares about the business like you do because you're the owner, and they're the employees, and that's the way it'll always be. And after putting in 90 to 100 hours a week, many days you lay down in bed and say, I just wish I had to know my old job back and I didn't buy myself a 100-hour-a-week job with all the rest. It's tough. Tough to do it. Most fail. Two-thirds fail in the first five years, and more fail after that if you make it. But then you got to you know, sell it in the end so you can have your life back, because that's the model. And then once you get that big lump sum, if you sold your business you worked on all the years, then what do you do? 
You have to time your death, right? So the money doesn't run out for your death. And nobody likes to live on their nest egg they work for their whole life. So, you know, it's all about cash flow, right? Sure, yeah. What else can you do? You can buy a franchise. Why do more franchisees actually make it than people who start their own business? Because somebody else already made all the mistakes and they wrote them in a book called The Franchise Manual and they say, do it just like this. Don't change anything. And surprisingly, 75% of all franchisees actually make some money. Some of them make okay money, but some don't make much. And once one store works, then you want the next area, but usually the next area is gone. So you've got to go to the next city maybe, and now your business is all spread out, you take more risk every time you expand, and you've got a whole you know, host of teenagers working for you or whatever, and you've got brain damage. That's what you've got going on in your life. More risk, not a lot of money. The average sat Subway sandwich store franchise owner nets about $2,000 a month per store. After all their risk, all their employees, all their brain damage, and all their expenses. you got to have like 10 of them to make a decent living. Right? Then you're running a teenage daycare center. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a higher success rate, world-class branding, proven systems. What are the problems? Limited expansion capability, large investment to expand for a new startup, plus royalties. That's the worst part of a franchise. If you buy a house and you have a 30-year mortgage, eventually you pay it off and you own the house. You never pay off the franchise. You pay on it forever. It's like you're renting their idea. So you pay them off the top, your best money every month forever. You never own it. You're renting. That's the worst part. All right. Or you can build a network. Why would you want to build a network? Well, folks, you get the same stuff. You get world-class branding. You get proven systems. You get comprehensive training. You have unlimited expansion capability. You go to 48 countries. What does it cost you to do it? $15 one time for you to have the ability to be an international sponsor. And they do all that accounting and track everything and give you access to all those warehouses and everything. Is that a good deal? That's a good deal, right? Low barrier of entry. That's good and bad. That means more people can join. It's easy to join. We'd probably make you more successful if we charged you 150 or 200,000 to get in. Because then you'd treat it serious. Then you'd actually show up every day and work it, talk to people and everything. But it's only $1,500. That's about the maximum you can even spend to get in. We don't get your money. That goes to New Skin. Okay, it doesn't come to us. But that's what you need to do to get a little bit of inventory so you can start. $1,500 is nothing to start a business. In fact, I'll wager that you couldn't even hire an attorney to drop the organizational papers for your new company for $1,500. Nothing to start a business. So, why else, why else would you do a network? Let me tell you why, folks. The world has become a network. When I started 21 years ago, it wasn't a very good network yet. When I started in Utah, and I wanted to recruit this lady I knew in New York, you know what I did? I made a $5 phone call on AT&T. I got her interested and she said, send me the videotape. I bought a $3.50 VHS cassette and 